What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here with yet another Tottenham update video to bring to you today, this Friday weekend of no Spurs. Uh, it's a bit of yeah. a slow news week, but... Um, yeah, withdrawal symptoms. I want my Spurs back. <laughs> I know, I know. We got, we got England... Yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the only thing I hope with England is no Spurs players play. <laughs> yeah, and, and as well with every other international uh, team as well, which we'll mm -hmm. get into uh, at the back end of the video. But let's start off with talking about the Premier League because they've announced today that all the fixtures on in October will be televised on TV. But there's a bit of a caveat with it, isn't it, Sim? No, they ha yeah, they, they, they haven't said all games will be televised or will be shown on TV. All they said is all the games that are not televised, um, that are not shown on TV, will be available for a pay per view service for fifteen pounds a game. So if you're if you're a match going fan who has already prepaid for your season ticket, you're paying Sky and you're paying BT and you're paying Amazon monthly fees of probably over a hundred pounds a month. You now have to add on top of that any game. The only legal way to watch your team play is to pay a, a, um, fifteen pounds per view if your team isn't shown on Sky, BT, or Amazon for that weekend. So it's an absolute disgraceful move from the Premier League. I'm so annoyed about it. I'm so angry. And there's been uproar about it. Hopefully be, there'll be a U-turn, just like there was a U-turn for you know, Liverpool and Spurs furlough, sk furlough schemes and things like that. I'm hoping there'll be a U-turn because this is an absolute disgrace. I mean. Why are they not just on like a red button on Sky or something like that? I don't understand. Like, why? Why are they even doing this? Just to fleece fans with a bit more money? Apparently, all twenty teams. Vo oh, sorry, out of the twenty teams, there was a vote on it. Nineteen voted in favour. Only one team voted against. You know that, that team that was? Who? Leicester. Really? Leicester were the only team to vote against this the motion. Um, I don't know why they haven't made just made it part of the subscription service. You've got Scar, we've got BT. You make it available for us, so we're paying. We're paying already all these extortionate fees. It's already too much. It's already extortionate. It's already driving fans away. Yet you want to add fifteen pounds on top of that for each individual game. Are you serious? You could you can make it five pounds. Even that would be um, a bit much, but that would be more affordable. Fifteen quid is an absolute joke. I mean, the Premier League has just turned into just like a a cash money grabbing, count. just a complete money grabbing league, but. Look, I mean, it's good in a sense that everyone's going to be able to watch their team every single game, but why charge these extortionate rates? It just makes no sense. But what, but what about these fans who've already paid up front? We've paid 20% for our season tickets. What about other other fans who've already had been forced to pay up front for games they can't attend and now they're being shout out the games they pay for their season ticket and now they're saying well if you actually want to see the, the matches you can't attend because you've paid your season ticket and we're not letting fans in the stadium well you have to pay an extra 15 quid for that service because even though you've paid even though we're not offering you a refund just yet because we're not sure if fans are going to be back in even though we made you pay up front we want more money from you right now i mean at the end of the day all this is going to do is force your average going fan to stream it illegally that's all it's going to do that is 100% right and I don't blame any fan for doing that and the Premier League have got to think about this seriously because right now on like on Twitter I know the world doesn't isn't made on Twitter but IPTV is actually trending it just shows the power of um, these schemes and, and what people and what lengths people are going to go to to get around it because there's no you're leaving people no option here we're in the middle no forget this we're in the middle of a pandemic as well man people are at home people, people lost their jobs people are struggling and you're trying to just fleece fans for as much money as possible because you've lost your match day revenue. I'm sorry, Premier League clubs spent £1.2 billion pounds in transfers um, in this current transfer window. If we we're really struggling as much as um, uh, the clubs would like you to think, then everyone would have not spent at all and just gone with the squads they got if they were struggling that badly. But we did spend £1.2 billion in, in, in the Premier League totally. So... Clearly, they can um, clubs are uh, finding uh, money from somewhere. Exactly, you know I mean? and um, EFL teams are, are currently they're being made to pay ten pound a game, which is also a bit also a joke. But um, making match going fans pay fifteen pounds. Uh, I know you you probably would say, oh, if you were to go for a match ticket, it's usually forty fifty quid for a ticket, so it's a lot de a lot less on price. But come on, this is this is a different time. You're making people watch from home, and you're you're making people you're charging people already for their subscriptions and you're making them pay this how many, on top of how that. many subscription services do you want people to pay for like you said we've paid 20 percent of our season tickets sky's an extortionate rate bt's extortion even amazon prime where they had a few uh, games on last mm. season um um you know people are paying for that so look Not enough happy. enough of this money grabbing business I, I really hope and call on the premier league to make a u-turn on this because it's getting quite disgusting how 
how much it's just cost to watch football these days. Um, but look, let's not waste too much time on this. Let's move on to a potential incoming for Tottenham Hotspur, Joe Roden. Uh, it was links on the deadline day. Has there been up, any update on this one? Uh, a few more, few updates. Obviously, because um, with the Europa League squad has been announced, we'll, we'll go into that in a minute, he is not going to be available to play in the Europa League, but apparently Tottenham are looking now to buy him and send him back on a season-long loan to Swansea and have him play next season at Tottenham. Uh, apparently, a bid is lined up for around £13 million. And uh, obviously, um, Swansea were looking for 18. Apparently, Spurs were looking to pay closer to seven. Apparently, it looks like there's been a bit of a compromise. Nothing official yet, but signs are looking decent that Tottenham might get secure services for around 13 million and then send him back to Swansea on a season long loan. Yeah, and it was interesting because I was watching him quite closely in the England Wales game last night. I thought he performed really well. Um, <clears throat> and after watching that game, I really thought he would be one to like slot in. Quite, quite easily and seamlessly. He looks like a very, very good player and that was backed up by claims from Ben Davis before the game as well who mentioned how he's a very level-headed guy and he backs him to, to make a name for himself in the world of football yeah, um, he whether said, he joins Tottenham or not. Yeah, he said he's played... Um He's played against the likes of Croatia and looked absolutely at home there, like against top opposition. And mm. he's for a young age, he's very composed and he's, he definitely has the ability to play at the top, top level. So I guess we'll see. All right. Now let's talk about the Europa League squad because obviously, like Sim just mentioned, the Europa League squad did uh, get announced a couple of days ago. Uh, there's been some interesting omissions from there. Yeah, a couple of omissions. Obviously, because we were two players over on our foreign limit for Europa League, there were two players who had to be left out and there was a lot of talk who was going to be. And it ended up being probably the two players you most expected. Paolo Gazaniga, first of all, who obviously has fallen behind Joe Hart in the, in the race to be second place in, our, um, in goal. And Jedson Fernandez, who unfortunately has now been left out of the Europa League squad, which is going to be a massive blow to him because he probably saw that competition as a big opportunity to, start to get minutes on the yeah. pitch because it's unlikely he's going to be playing many Premier League games uh, from the start, given our options to midfield. So he probably had Europa. I had his. Um, he probably had his eyes set on a, a Europa League spot, trying to win his place and win minutes through that avenue. But that avenue has now been cut off. Him. as well, potentially. Probably and Gasniga as well. They probably, they probably both. They probably both uh, uh, had uh, their eyes set on it. But unfortunately, they've both been left out, so it's going to be even harder for them to gain minutes and earn a place uh, in, um, in the first team. So it looks like that could be the final nail, final nail in the coffin for Jetson in terms of him staying on. I think this is the beginning of the end for him. I think it might be the end of the end. Well, the end of the end, <laughs> the end of the season, won't Yeah, it? I guess. But um, I feel like, yeah. I think this was his chance. That, that, his chance to kind of play his way into a first team slot was going to be in Europa League, and with him not being in Europa League squad, I can't see him getting many minutes, and I can't see him uh, um, staying beyond his loan deal now, I mean, especially given the high price it's going to cost us to keep him on. I mean, the only way he stakes a claim to be in the team now is if we get a host of injuries. That's the, literally the only way. Mm -hmm. So. And then he somehow earns a place. Yeah, or well, I guess, look, we don't know how he is in training, but I can't, unless he's like the best player in the world in training. I mean, if he was, yeah. then he would be in the Europa League squad. Exactly. So it's tough on him. Um, obviously, uh, there's not many options to leave out uh, instead of him. I can't really, you know, there's no, most other players are either big international players who, who are regular first team players or like it's just nowhere no, or they're, they're important first team players for Tottenham so I can't really see who we're going to leave out in terms of the foreign list it's unlucky because in the Premier League list um, Ben Davis and Dyer count as homegrown but in Europa League standards they count as foreign so that's how it is all right, and let's move on to the moment you've all been waiting for. And this is the news on Gareth Bell and when he will potentially make his Tottenham Hotspur debut. And can you give us that game, Sim? Yeah, well, because um, Alistair Gold gave us an update actually a week ago saying um, that he was still recovering from his injury and he was actually going to be a doubt for the game against West Ham. And he wasn't absolutely sure that he would make his debut. But it has been an update today from the Telegraph, from Mike McGrath, McGrath who's actually a very reliable source. And he says that... Gareth Bale has now fully recovered from his knee injury and he expects Gareth Bale to be in the squad for the game against West Ham and uh, make his first appearance either from the start or from the bench but he will be in the squad so it's absolutely really exciting news coming out of the Tottenham camp apparently according to Alistair Gold they've been blown away by his quality and his drive in training since he's come to Spurs and especially since the international break when he's been alone uh, apparently he's been mentoring some of the younger players and he's been absolutely driven to 
to get back fit and back to his best. And the news that he um, is now fully fit and he's going to be available for selection is massive, massive boost to Tottenham. And it should, obviously, the buzz already has given the whole squad a lift. We've seen that result. But hopefully him being involved is going to give everyone even a bigger boost for the game against West Ham. So I'm really, really excited. I can't wait for him to be involved. I'm really excited for him to uh, just put on that Spurs shirt again and just, you know, if he gets a goal in his debut, man, it's going to be unbelievable. I don't know what I'll do. Honestly, it's going to be, you will be able to see what live what I'll do. But um, I can't wait. Honestly, cannot wait. Yeah, but I mean, that's music. Just a thought of it. Like, that's just a music to on all face. of our ears. It looks as though Gareth Bale will be making his debut against West Ham next weekend. So not long to go not now. Long, not long, long to go. Me, we I waited can't... seven years. Now we oh, can wait seven days. I know. It's going to be the longest. Oh, dude, this whole week has gone so slow. Now, I know, since we've I know. lost and beaten Man United 6-1. I'm like, I just want Tottenham. I want to see my Spurs back. I just can't be bothered with these stupid international Nations League. I mean, they should have cancelled the Nations League just this year. Cancel it. Just cancel it. Come back to the Premier League. And what, what was the point in that England Wales friendly last night? Well, yeah, I don't know why. No point to no, it whatsoever. Just, just try and get players injured, basically. Just why? Why add a third game in? Mm. I mean, these internationals are pissing me off. Anyway, he's saying these internationals are pissing off. Now, we've got a bit of an international roundup to what Spurs players have been involved in so far. We're going to start off with Spain against Portugal as Sergio Regalón played 45 minutes. The first 45 minutes for Spain. He got taken off at half-time uh, and he limped off and he was... Um, he had a bit of a knock. Can you tell us more about the injury? Yeah, Luis Enrique is saying he had a bit of a blow to his thigh and he got taken off. Luckily, uh, he said um, after the game that he said hopefully it won't be too serious and it's not too complicated um, and he, sh he should be... He didn't say he should be okay, but he said he'll have to have a check and hopefully he'll be okay. Uh, so obviously all the Tottenham fans got very, very worried about a potential injury and how long he could be out for. But the update um, Luis Enrique gave today was he is fit for the next game against Switzerland. It wasn't too serious, so nothing to worry about. Hopefully he's not involved, he gets a bit of a rest and he comes back for the West Ham game fit and firing. Um, but yeah, a bit of a scare there for Rechelon, but he seems to be okay. And there were loads of clips of Rechelon uh, diving in on Cristiano Ronaldo, winning the ball off him as well. I, was, I didn't see that, actually. Uh, yeah, it was, it, was, that. it was good, it was good. Um, the game finished nil-nil, so Rechelon kept, mm -hmm. kept Cristiano out. Uh, anyway, that was nil-nil, Spain against Portugal. The next game, England against Wales in a, in a friendly. England won 3 nil. Uh, Winks playing 75 minutes for England and Ben Davis captaining Wales on the night playing 90 minutes and having his 55th cap for Wales so yeah. that's good on Ben Davis isn't and it? Kieran Trippi a former Tottenham player captain yeah. England so it's interesting our two backup right backs from <laughs> 2016 I yeah. saw so our two backup fullbacks sorry are now were captaining their country in the England versus Wales game on a on a Thursday night, which was just a bit of a surreal thing to see, uh, because everyone said there were two weak spots, but they seem mm. to be captaining their countries. But anyway, uh, good on them. Uh, good for Trippier to be uh, um, that you know so well valued in the squad that he's captaining. And Ben Davis probably a good moment for him. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's move on to the Republic of Ireland played Slovakia in a Euro 2021 uh, playoff semi final. It finished nil nil, and Slovakia ended up winning on penalties with Matt Doherty playing all 120 minutes, and he unfortunately unfortunately missed the defining penalty the last penalty for Ireland that knocked yeah. them out uh, which is sad isn't it really? Yeah sad obviously hopefully he's not knocked too much about it it's been a bit of a weird start to the season for him obviously giving away two penalties which weren't his fault um, not pro probably not being his best so far right back uh, since he's played for Spurs to come to Spurs and now going on international duty and missing the deciding penalty for, to knock Ireland out of the uh, Euro qualification uh, so big big shame for him hopefully he doesn't take it too, too much to heart like players miss penalties mm. um, there's actually statistics in terms of when a player misses a penalty how likely they are to miss and the statistics are when um, a player is stepping up to win win the penalty shootout there's about a 70 percent chance they're going to score and when a player steps up to keep the team in, in keep the team in it there's about 60 percent chance they're going to miss so it's no surprise that Matt Doherty stepping up to keep his side in it missed but big blow for him he actually went for power he we tried to go, go high and he hit the crossbar and uh, just one of those where he kind of uh, you know well, lucky he wasn't playing that night uh, when we yeah Chelsea. when we played Chelsea <laughs> lucky he wasn't there to take a penalty but so unfortunate for him it's been a weird start as I said keep, your, him, keep your penalty misses for your national team and not exactly, the club that's, but hopefully that's he comes back and he has a point to prove when he comes back for Spurs because Aurier started the season very well yeah and, and talking about Serge Aurier, Belgium have played Ivory Coast as well in a one-all draw. No Spurs players played for Belgium on the night, but Serge Aurier played for Ivory Coast. Um, he played in a 
um, in a 3-4-3 position, like on the right-hand side of midfield with Nicola Pepe just in front of him. So it was a bit of a weird one, him alongside mm. Pepe on the right-hand side there for Ivory Coast. I believe Aurier captained his side. Yeah, he did. Aurier did captain his side. Aurier is the Ivory Coast captain. Is he? That's yeah. a weird one. Aurier, yeah, you wouldn't think he's <laughs> captain material, but there you go. He captain. How oh, many captains do we have? Yeah, we've got a lot of captains. We got a lot of captains, and also Denmark played. Hoybier didn't play a minute, uh, oh, so that's that's good. that's good news. That's very good news. Hopefully, the players get rested up. I don't know. Um, obviously, there's another two games to come up, so you know if, where the players get minutes and get injured is going to be a, a cause for concern. Because obviously, we got they play on Sunday and then I believe Wednesday, mm. so a lot of games coming up for the players. So hopefully, they don't get too overworked over the international break, and some of them come back fresh for the. Uh, um, Wales game, but the good news is that the players staying at home were, you know, we had Delhi, Bale, Vinicius, Lo Celso, and Don Bele. So we have a lot of quality players staying behind who are not picked in the squad. So and Gio Lovato and Celso is obviously withdrawn from the Argentinian he squad. He was withdrawn as well. with the, with, uh, with having a bit of a knock, but hopefully it wasn't too serious and he should be back for West Ham. Um, we haven't heard anything official on that, but hopefully, yeah, hopefully we, the, they're not too overworked and it should be okay. All right, so there you have it. That is the Tottenham update for you today. Have a good weekend. Unfortunately, it's going to be a Spurs-free weekend, but one week to go until Gareth Bell hopefully <laughs> makes his debut for countdown, Tottenham I'm against West Ham. This is the countdown. <laughs> we'll be bringing you an update on all the other Spurs players and how they're getting on on international break. That is your update. Let me know in the comment section below all your thoughts regarding all the matters that we spoke about. Like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, come, come on, on, you Spurs. Spurs. Oh, my God.